welcome to Being with Dr. Z. I'm Dr. Zaria Davis, and today we have an amazing guest with us, Lynette R. Williams, aka Cookie. Um, it is such an honor to be able to interview her as she, um, in her bio, is described as a kind and caring individual um, with the heart for the underdog. And I will say that um, Cookie, as she um, is affectionately called by people has been an amazing um, person in my life someone who was there for me at a very difficult time and i'm so grateful um, for who she is and who she continues to be um, i tell the story and recently told the story of um to a group that you know my last day um, inside of prison um, it was raining and it was time for me to go home and she came over to my bunk and said it's raining and God is blessing, um, pouring down blessings on you. And I never forget that because um, it just meant so much. And every time it rains, I think about the blessings of God pouring down on me. Um, and so I'm so happy to have her here with us today to talk about her amazing work. Um, since her release in April of 2020, she founded Woman Unsilenced, which is a nonprofit organization um, for women who basically work to empower uh, women who've been traumatized by the system. Um, and they provide tools and support to help our sisters gain, regain their sense of self-worth. Um, she's the president and CEO of Woman Unsilenced LLC. She's also the owner of Three Manuscripts, the host of a weekly streamcast called Prison Reentry, We Are Your Neighbor. And she's the future owner of safe housing across the country. Currently, she's looking forward to launching her first one-hour documentary later this year and book release. She's a certified life coach where she focuses on entrepreneurship, and in that, it led her to launch her finance company. Together with her partner, she co she's the co-president and co-CEO of Next Level Finance Corp. Um, she focuses also on credit counseling repair as well as e-commerce. And so I'm so excited to have um, have you with us here today, Lynette. It is such a pleasure. Um, and so I want to just start with asking a little bit more about like yourself and the women that you work with and what has led you into this work that we are currently talking about today. So again, welcome. Um, just want to give you the opportunity to share more about who you are, anything that I missed in the bio, um, just to make sure that our, our watchers are, are here and, and listening. You are muted. <laughs> that space is just not a place for it's not a place for women. Um, and I know that, you know, there's consequences for all actions and I get that, but the amount of people that, um, there's, there, there, there needs to be alternatives. That's the long and the short of it. There needs to be alternatives to incarceration. It's so important. You're absolutely right. And I think that a lot of times um, when we are in these spaces, you know, people have a lot of assumptions about people that are, you know, incarcerated. A lot of assumptions. And so if you were to dispel a myth, right, that you think people should know around either people that are currently incarcerated or people that are formerly incarcerated, what would that myth be that you would dispel? Well, hmm. you know, I think when we were, from the time we were able to understand our parents' words talking to us, bad people are in prison. Bad people are in prison. That's a myth that we need to toss away forever. Because yes, there are bad people in prison, but then there are some very, very good people in prison. And I've met more good people in prison than I've met anywhere in the world. And I can say world because I have traveled. And um, when you are, yeah, that's a, that's a myth that needs to end because we as people need to come together. There's too many good people behind, behind the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. 
So tell us a little bit more about your work. You have um, you have Woman in Silence LLC, and then you also have um, finance company that you're doing. You have a book coming out. You have a documentary. You got three manuscripts and a documentary. So we'd love to learn more about just um, the work that you're doing and, and all of those things and how we can support it. Oh, wow. Um, to, just to even, I think where I'll start is, I think I'll start with um, Woman Unsilenced. It's all relative and it all flows together and you'll see. Um, but Woman Unsilenced was something that was born on my heart once I came out of prison. So I'm a businesswoman and I've always, you know, while I was away, I um, spent time, you know, that's the best way to spend time. You read, you study, there's history and business plans, right? So I definitely had the plan. I had a few plans. And um, when I came home, none of those things moved my heart. You know, they didn't, they didn't resonate. Not that they weren't weren't picked up again, as you see finance is now added to my um, my list there. But um, it was important for me to reach back into the community that I had left. And it is a community of women. It was important for me to reach back because of the trauma that our women face. And so, you know, I wanted to focus on trauma initially because I just felt like at the time that trauma was the biggest thing. The trauma of incarceration was the was the greatest devastation of my life. And um, and then talking to the women that were inside, I realized that their trauma happened long before. And so as I'm talking to them, I'm realizing that hmm, my trauma happened long before too. So I had this, I had the, just to keep everything short in, in a nice neat little box, but I had a white picket fence childhood. And so when you, when you coming from a space like mine, everything looked great from the outside. And um, so you don't think that anything is, is, is not necessarily wrong, but could be better, you know, or could be instilled differently. And so, um, so talking to these women and and the trauma of their childhood resulting in prison, I realized that um, there was some trauma in my life as a child. There was some trauma in my life as a child that I never even realized before. Um, and I was like, wow. So it's not so much I'm focusing on traumas of other people. I'm focusing on my trauma as well. And it's like 90, 90 plus percent of the people, and that's my own percentage, don't quote me, but it's this damn close trust. Um, <laughs> absolutely, are, are, absolutely. <laughs> yes, you can attest to that because you have the degrees, okay? Um, 90 plus percent is of us women in, incarcerated are trauma impacted um, from childhood. You know, and you don't, once you start talking to people, you, you get that. And so I wanted to build an organization that focused on trauma, um, generational trauma, you know, and as the time passed, it just kept morphing and it's like, okay, now it's time for you to get to the nitty gritty and start this re-entry that you need to be, you need to be on that road to re-entry because I think that's where I can be of most help. That's how all of everything else that I've decided to do, not even decided, but my heart moved to do, is relevant now. Real estate, I'm gonna take what real estate, what, what, I'm gonna take what was meant to be destructive, destruction, the destru <laughs> destruction in my life, um, what could say the worst part um, of my, um, of my um, business life. And I'm gonna use that to, to build safe houses for women across the country. Prior to prison, I had a real estate investment firm out of seven states. And I had property out of probably maybe five, maybe five different states. And um, it was five different states actually. And now, so I can take all of that knowledge and I bought the properties, I fixed them up. And um, 
So now I'm just gonna buy, fix them up, and have them for the for women re-entering from um, from prison. So it's all relative. And the books, of course, my manuscripts I wrote while I was away. I wrote my first one, and uh, and it's so funny because I was talking to one of my um, one of my girlfriends, <laughs> and I had a bunch of paper in my in my hand. It's like a folder, you know. And she was like, and I said something about my book. And she said, oh, she said, my goodness, I thought you were talking about that was your book or something. She said, could you imagine if that was your book? Like you had to, like who has, who, has, who does that? Who writes like that? You know, like all those pages, because we have computers now where she was coming from. And I said, uh, that is my book. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you said you, you, what? That's right. She couldn't believe it. It was a stack like I don't know if you can even see my hands, but it was a stack of papers. And I actually, I said, well, it's not papers like that anymore. You know, I had to, you know, I typed it up before I left prison. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, so, so, so where's your, you, you have your thumb drive? Cause she was talking, we were talking about editing. I said, no, I don't have a thumb drive. It's, I, I said, I had to type it up. So now I have to scan it into the computer. She says, what are you talking about? She was totally clueless. Mm -hmm. Like she could not believe the, um, the antiquated way that we lived in there. There's no, there's no computers. She, I said, girl, I typed this on a Selectric, a right. Selectric typewriter right. of the eighties. Yes. I said, I had to buy typewriter ribbon. <laughs> so right. She said, wow, I, yes, I typed 300 pages. Yes, 11 lines across, oh, but is it 11 words across, 33 lines down, yeah. And she, they, I mean, just blown away. And um, to even to even sit here and speak on it right now is um, kind of crazy. Like we did. Now you had inside they had the, um, the computer for you to send emails, but that was an interface, right? Mm -hmm. So um, and to use the computer, you had to. It was like every fifteen minutes. I don't even remember, but mm -hmm. for thirty the minutes, you were, right, right. Like, it, <laughs> You can't, you look for every 30 minutes. I think it would have cost like $10. You only make $5 a month. So listen, when I tell you that was a space. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all things come back around. And of course I was a businesswoman. I had three other businesses before prison. So that's where my finance corp comes in to play so awesome. in my niche in entrepreneurship. So that's how all that stuff just, just and you all, were supposed to stop me. Oh. All, it all just came together, but that's but that's awesome. And I think that that entrepreneurship piece is going to be critical, especially working with the women, especially for people who may have not, you know, had a skill or you know known how to like run a business or anything like that prior to going in. And one of the things that you know I have conversations with people about a lot is that. You know, for people who are living with felony convictions, oftentimes entrepreneurship is the way to go because, you know, you deal with so many barriers with employment. It's just unreal. People keep talking about like the shortage in hiring, yet they won't hire people with felony convictions, you know, right. they, they'll rather their business go under than mm -hmm. hire somebody with a record. Because mm -hmm. society has told them what you talked about earlier, like all the people that go to jail or prison are bad people, right? So right. they don't want those people working for them. And they would rather shut their doors than hire somebody with a record. So oftentimes entrepreneurship is the way for people to be able to really grow and make it, you know, mm -hmm. um, in this in this world after incarceration. So I'm I'm glad that you have that vision, right? Not just the history of being an entrepreneur, but also the vision that you've been given to really be a blessing to other women that are coming home and have those safe houses throughout the country. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be critical. Um, having alternatives to either being at a, a halfway house or a shelter, you know, um, where the treatment is like being in prison or jail, right? And that's so right there's still like that dehumanization um, when we're dealing in those kind of spaces. So thank you for, um, thank you for sharing that. And so I want to know, like, what is, the, what are your hopes? Um, what are your hopes and aspirations for your organization? Just as far as the growth that you want to see, you know, over the next year or so with the organization. I want to see for the, uh, for Women on Silence, I want it to get stronger I'm praying for 
the people that I'm, I'm praying for a circle of us to come together and um, to pull it all together, to pull Woman in Silence all together, to make it whole. Um, Woman in Silence was on my, was on my, as an executive director of it for five years for five years. After five years, I want to step away from the operations of Woman on Silence. And I wanna I wanna employ someone that is coming home from incarceration with a fresh set of needs mm -hmm. and understanding what those needs are. You know, and I had said while I was inside, you know, we do all these things inside for these certificates and nobody pays attention to this stuff. This is like, it's really just garbage, right? Now, some people, um, some people gain from it. And of course you can learn anything in, in, uh, from anybody, but the most, the people that it benefits the most definitely are not the educated people. Mm -hmm. And so I, but the educated people participate because it's a way to spend time and that's great. But what happens to these certificates when you come home? Nobody cares that you were in an ACE class. I mean, what? But um, I want those certificates to count for something when I get ready to hire my executive director because I want them, to, I want that work that they, that good work that they did inside to be mm -hmm. quantifiable. That is so awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I mean, I'm sure I still have a folder somewhere with like all my certificates. And I thought when I came home, like I was going to show them to the people at the halfway house and they're going to go, yay, let's help you, <laughs> you know, do something. I don't know what I was expecting. Right. Um, right. And it meant absolutely nothing to anyone. <laughs> Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've and I've talked to other people that are like, I stayed busy. I did this and I did that, and it didn't. It, you're right. I mean, it didn't have any impact on them being able to get employment or or any other you know supports in place. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so for for 2022, do you have any personal goals that you want to accomplish or things that you want to work on? Hmm. Well. You know, all of this is just personal to me, right? The finance company, that's going to be a little extension, but all of the other stuff is personal, but I will go even deeper than that for you. <laughs> so personally, I just want to, um, I want to, I just want to keep growing. I don't want to become, I don't want to get to a place and I feel like, okay, I made it. Mm -hmm. You know, because that space doesn't exist until that we're at the end of the road, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to be mindful and, and cognizant of um, of all things about growth and making myself better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's that's yeah. Thank you. Thank you for growing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So to our to our watchers and listeners out there, what would you like to leave leave for them? Like what little nugget would you like to share with them as we start to kind of come to a close? Hmm. To our watchers, I'm gonna say something to you guys that I say on my podcast, um, prison reentry, and um, we are your neighbors. We are your neighbors. It's, 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 um, embrace us. We're returning citizens. We're mothers. We're grandmothers. We are brothers and sisters. You know, we're family. And granted, some people come home with more things that they need to square away uh, internally, but we can still support them and, um, and kind of guide them. You know, we're people, we're here. And everything, I think, I think there's a bone in all of us that wants to live in peace and harmony. And so, and, 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 and when you embrace somebody, it's kind of hard to get them out of that bear hug space. It's kind of hard for them to wiggle away from that bear hug, you know? So, so I just want, um, I want all of us to be embraced as we're returning back to society. It's, it's necessary. And to the ones that are returning back to society, chin up and carry yourself and press forward to the rest of your blessed life. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So for for those people that are listening and they want to reach out to you or learn more about the work that you're doing, how can people get in contact with you? Oh, wow. There's so many ways. Um, if you just remember woman unsilenced, that's W-O-M-A-N, woman unsilenced. And we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We are having a great time over at Twitch. Uh, tw- that's twitch.tv forward slash woman unsilenced. Uh, we're having a great time over there and we, we were really well received, <clears throat> well received over there with the podcast. And um, you could also reach us at womanunsilenced.org, uh, sister at woman unsilenced. There's so many ways. Just say woman on site. Listen, YouTube, <laughs> we're everywhere. That's so awesome. And yes. then, um, so with you mentioned the podcast, and if people want to like make a donation, is there a link on your site if they would like to do that as well? There is a link uh, on my on the web on the website. Okay. And and on the Instagram. Actually, it's on the Facebook as well. Okay. So yeah, it's yeah. There's there's links there, and we are fundraising. I want to say this too because it's very important. We are fundraising for our first safe house, and um, it's actually in Queens. I have an eye on a property. I actually know the owner, so if I can get if I can get the funds for this safe house, that could be one of three that I expect to obtain um, by the end of the year, 2022. That is awesome. So um, we will be adding in um, at the end of this, just all the different links. So that'll be included and it'll also be in the comment section. So if people want to support Women in Silence, they can definitely do that. And I just want to personally thank you for um, being with me today, sharing your story, sharing a little bit of our story and, um, and just the amazing work that you're doing for women that are coming home. I think that there's such a need. I don't think that there can ever be enough for women because there's such a disparity in like resources mm-hmm. between um, men and women coming home, typically in most cities. And so as many programs and organizations mm-hmm. and groups that we can lift up and support you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and, you know, I think a lot, a lot about the fact that a lot of the work is going to be, you know, based in different states and regionally. And so I look forward to like all of the various organizations coming together and just mm-hmm. being able to support each other and, you know, important into each other and to the work that we're doing. So yes. thank you again for joining me today. And thank we you look so forward much. to we're going to definitely have you back on here when the books come out and everything okay. else. Just know this is like part one <laughs> of our interview. <laughs> and when I'll be happy to out, do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Peace and blessings. <laughs>